Well, good morning, everyone. We're in Deuteronomy chapter 18 and in 2 Timothy 4 today. Preaching. Preaching has always been the key. The Old Testament and the New. The preaching of the Word of God. Nothing like good old hellfire and brimstone preacher. Yeah. You know, Eighteen, we're going to start with verse fifteen. Good morning. We're going to be in Deuteronomy 18. Deuteronomy chapter 18, starting with verse 15 in the Old Testament. Then we're going to go to the New Testament, 2 Timothy chapter 4. It's on preaching. Preaching has always been the key. When you have the lack of preaching... Uh, you have troubles. I know men that used to preach and now they're pussyfooters. You know what a pussyfooting preacher is? A pussyfooting preacher, they don't tell you the truth. They, they, they give you a sugar stick. They give you sugar candy stick uh, sermons. Make you feel good. We're in Deuteronomy chapter 18. This is God in the Old Testament. Tell them we're going to have preachers and then we're going to go to Paul talking to Timothy, a young preacher in the New Testament. Deuteronomy 18, starting with verse 15. Find that in your Bibles. If you find it in the Pew Bible, holler the page out. 260 if you're looking for it. Did you hear that, church? Holler it again, Donnie. 260. Okay, 260. The promise of a prophet. That's a preacher. A proper preacher. Verse 15, Deuteronomy 18. The Lord thy God will raise up unto thee a prophet or a preacher from the midst of thee, of thy brethren, just like it is today, like unto me, unto him. Him ye shall hearken. Who wrote Deuteronomy? Moses. He was certainly some kind of preacher. Brought down Ten Commandments. Amen. And leader. Verse 16. Deuteronomy 18. According to all that thou desirest of the Lord thy God in Horeb. In the day of the assembly saying. Let me not hear again the voice of the Lord my God, neither let me see this great fire any more that I die not. Verse 17, And the Lord said unto me, Thy have well spoken that which they, thy have spoken. I will raise them up a prophet or a preacher from among their brethren. He's saying it again, second time. You know, God gets repetitious, and when God's repetitious, pay attention. You know that great truth of putting the Lord thy God number one, first and great commandment? That's repeated constantly through the Old Testament and the New. Do you know why? Because it's most important. Some people accuse me. They say, Pastor Varga, you're, you're a repetitious preacher. I'm a repetitious preacher because the Bible is repetitious. And when the, where the Bible is repetitious, that's where I'm repetitious. They say, why are you always talking about adultery and fornication? Because that's what the Bible talks about all through. You know why? Because there's so much of it rampant. And it's rampant today just like it was all in the Old Testament and all through. Do you understand what I'm saying? There ain't nothing new under the sun. What was trouble then? What preachers had to preach then? In Deuteronomy. Remember he had them preachers, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Daniel, Hosea, Joel, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, 
Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Zechariah, Malachi. Them were all preachers, amen? amen? And I'll tell you what. You read it. They preach fire and brimstone, I guarantee you. <laughs> when them people see the, when them pre people see the real preachers coming, they say, look out. It's the same thing today. <laughs> I'm glad. I'm glad I'm a hellfire and brimstone preacher. <laughs> you know what a hellfire and brimstone preacher will do to you? Whether it was Isaiah and Jeremiah, Ezekiel, whoever, or not. In this day and age, hell farm, you know what they do? <laughs> they'll make you mad or they'll make you glad. <laughs> they make you mad if you won't listen. I guess I better start preaching a little harder. I ain't had nobody walk out on me lately. <laughs> Over the years, I had a lot of people get up right. But Donnie, you've been here when they get up and walk out. Yeah, they get up and walk They won't listen. <laughs> yeah. What verse on? The Lord said unto me, They have well spoken. Verse 18, I'll raise them up a prophet or preacher from among their brethren. Same thing he said, repetition. Uh, talk about repetition. Second time he said it here in 18, um, Deuteronomy, Moses. Like unto thee, I'll put my words. I will put my words in his mouth. Well, glory. I pray God put his words in, uh, in my mouth today, just like God said he would. Put your words in my mouth. And he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him. Well, I got the Bible. That's all the commandments. So he don't. See, back in the Old Testament, when he was writing the Bible, he had to come down and talk to him. And then he had that Moses bring them commandments down, to him, uh, uh, etched in, in stone uh, with the finger of God, it said. That's what it said, finger of God. And it shall come to pass that whosoever will not hearken unto my words, which he shall speak in my name, that's what I'm speaking, and I will require it of him. What it means is if you hear heavy preaching, uh, you're responsible and you're accountable to answer or go to hell. You understand? Yeah. You ought to be glad you got a preacher that preaches hard here and, and preach the Bible. Verse 20, But the prophet which shall presume to speak a word in my name, which I have not commanded him to speak, that's them pussyfoot preachers then. They had them then. They said everything's going to be okay and everything come up roses, just like they do today. They're liars. They were liars then. They're liars now. These these health, wealth, and prosperity preachers we got today, huh? I mean, they got thousands in their churches. Yeah, you you know who they are? They're on television and they're here in the area. Yeah, preach a bunch of baloney. All the ones getting rich are them. <laughs> I've not commanded them to speak. You understand? Today, the same thing today. Oh, that shall speak in the name of other gods, the gods of this world, the gods of greed. The Bible says, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life are not of the Father, but are of the world. The world passed away and the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of God abide. We see where that's found. It's found in 1 John chapter 2. <clears throat> yeah, verse 15 to 17. That's where it's found, about worldliness. Verse 21, Deuteronomy 18. And if they say in thine heart, how shall we know the word which the Lord has not spoken? Here it tells you how. You can tell a false preacher. When a prophet speaketh in the name of the Lord, and if the thing follow not, nor come to pass, that is the thing which the Lord hath not spoken, but the prophet hath spoken it presumptuously, 
Thou shalt uh, not uh, be afraid of him. F false preacher. They got these phony preachers. The preachers tell them, you give me a hundred dollars, you get a thousand. You give me a thousand, you get ten thousand. He got some suckers out there keep giving them a hundred, giving them a thousand. They ain't getting it because uh, 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 you know why they're giving the money. They're giving they're giving the money for a, the wrong reason because they're greedy and they want more. They're worldly, huh? <laughs> yeah. Thou shall not be afraid of that false preachers. All right. Okay, New Testament, Second Timothy chapter four. Jump over there. Second Timothy four. I got it marked here in my Bible. Second Timothy four. Now Second Timothy, this is a letter written by Paul. It's a letter written by Paul to a young preacher. I got preachers. I got, I remember, I remember Sean, Sean Brewster. He, uh, he come to the rescue mission when he was a teenage boy, I think 17, 18. They told, uh, Milwaukee rescue mission. He come there and he got saved. And he followed me, and he, and he worked with me there. He's on my staff, and uh, and he's a preacher now. He has his church. What he did was, he he uh, he worked for me at the mission. I trained him, taught him how to preach. He's preached the same as he did. He preached like I do. He went, and. Uh, he had a job and he made money as his business for himself. And he bought an old raggedy church on 40th and North in Milwaukee. Anybody ever been in Milwaukee? Every I used to live in. You ever live in Milwaukee? Well, I drove through there a lot. Huh? You drove through? Okay. But Milwaukee on 40th and North, he bought an old beat up church that should have been torn down. He bought it with his own money. And he fixed it up with his own money. I see. That's a real man of God. Uh, he wasn't looking around for a cushy job for someone to hire him with a big salary. He still don't get no pay from the church. He still runs a couple of businesses. Sean Brewster. He'll get this. I'll send this to him. Sean, my buddy. I preached, I preached this, the first service that he had in that church when they had to remodel. He's doing good. And uh, Willie goes to his church. That, I told you about that nine-year-old boy that got saved in the Hillside Project. I, while I was preaching last week, I think I meant, might have mentioned him. He sent me a text, said, Preacher, you, I'm 50-some years old. He says, you preach just like you did when I was nine years old. I'm glad I haven't changed. Well, glory, I'm glad I haven't changed. A lot of people used to be with me, ain't with me no more. They went out in one different direction. I got a number of family members that have gone a different direction. They don't follow the teachings of this preacher. They don't come to my church anymore. Some of them could if they wanted. They don't. Yeah. Now here's Paul, God's man, God's preacher. He had a convert, Timothy. I could tell you a lot about Timothy. You just, I'm not going to go into all the details. But here's Paul's word to Timothy. Listen up now, look at it. What page is it on? You got it? 1414. 1414 in, in, the, in the Pew Bible. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly. Now it's got capital S there. That means Holy Spirit. Now you see this book. You see this book I have here? This King James Bible. 
You see it out there. They got a big one here, big giant print Bible. This book is God breathed. The Bible says it's God breathed. The Holy Spirit of God breathed, and that's what made this book. This is a God breathed book. You say, when was it written? It's always been. Did you know the Bible's always been just like God has always been? You say, I can't fathom it. I can't fathom how God's always been. There, there never been a beginning. Never been an end. To God. Did you know you and I had a beginning? But did you know... Did you know that we were created in God's image? Isn't that nice? We're so special. <clears throat> These dirty evolutionists, they teach evolution. They're, they're liars. They lie to our children. They don't lie to my children because since I've been saved, my children or my grandchildren that I had authority over to live with me, they went to Christian school. You know, in a public school today, you can't you can't read the Bible or break the Bible open. You can't teach creation in the in the, in the public school today. It's all evolution, the devil. You know you can't have any education without God. Do you understand that? You can't have true knowledge, or you you can't have true anything without God, and you can't have God without God's word. You better study the Word of God, King James Bible. Now the Spirit, capital S, Holy Spirit, speaketh expressly. How does the Holy Spirit speak to us today through the Bible? I'm on, I'm on 2 Timothy chapter 4. No, I'm not. I'm in 1 Timothy chapter 4. I'm sorry. Forgive me, folks. 1 Timothy chapter 4. Oh, I'm in the wrong one. I'm in the wrong place. Yeah. You're in the right place. Yes, sir. Thanks, folks. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got to excuse me. It's time change Sunday. <laughs> got to make some excuse, right? right. <laughs> and if all else fails, just say, I'm old. All right, 2 Timothy chapter 4. I'm where you were and I was in the wrong spot. I was in 1 Timothy. 2 okay. Timothy 4. I charge thee, therefore, before God. But what I told you in 1 Timothy 4, that was good too. You can open this Bible anywhere and preach it. It's good. <laughs> That's the one thing about the Bible. I flip this thing open anywhere and start preaching. I mean that. I charge thee, therefore, before God and, and the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, Jesus is God, but when he says God, here he's talking about God the Father. When he says before God and the Lord Jesus, it ain't that they're different. They're both, they are different, but they're the same. How can you be different but the same? Because the triune God, three persons, one God. You say, I don't understand it. I don't either, but I believe it, amen. <laughs> Who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom? Now look at here. I'm glad Jack Hiles. I'm glad John Rice. I'm glad all the preachers in the past. I'm glad A.B. Savage, one of my mentors in preaching. I'm glad all these hellfire and brimstone preachers that I've known over the years, they're all in heaven now. <clears throat> all my mentors or all the preachers that taught me, they're all in heaven now. There ain't none of them alive yet. Not a one of them. They're all dead because I'm old. They're all dead. My mentors are all dead. But they told me like Paul was telling Timothy, young preacher, amen. amen. Verse 2, preach the word. That's, that's the Bible. Be instant. In season. Out of season. It means all the time preaching. You know, I don't just preach on this pulpit. I preach wherever I go. 
I go in the pizzeria, I preach. I go in the grocery store, I preach. I, anywhere I go, I preach. A anywhere, I just, I preach. I preach all day long. That's the way it's supposed to be. But you know, this will shock you. You see, well, you're a preacher. How many of you are saved in here? Anybody in here saved? Okay, I got a few saved. Okay, most of you saved. Most everybody in here saved. But you know what? You're a preacher. I thought women couldn't be preachers. Oh, women are preachers. They can't be a pastor. You see, a pastor and a preacher are different. A pastor is an overseer. Huh? Now, a woman can oversee her children in the home, but they can't oversee the church. Because God has to enable the woman. Someone told me, uh, made a comment about that yesterday. They said, that man don't, don't like women. You, you know why they said... A couple of women. They said that man don't like a. Uh, uh, <laughs> you know, a man that'll speak up and tell a woman to take her place, what what she ought to take. They say that they hate women. They don't hate women. You know why women are so frustrated, uh, and uh, at wit's end, because they don't know their place, huh? They don't know their place of submission. Yeah. There's only two times in the Bible where reverence is called for. We're to reverence God, it says. And it says a woman's to reverence her husband. That's the only time reverence is named in the Bible. You, you, want, you want to get women preachers shot down, just read... The love chapter is 1 Corinthians 13. Read 1 Corinthians 14. It talks about the tongues heresy, and it talks about women preachers in there. It talks about women preachers in other parts of Scripture, too. But it really it really hits you in the chops in, in 1 Corinthians 14. Read that. For the time will come when they will... Not endure sound doctrine. What sound doctrine? Bible preaching. Hellfire and brimstone. These pussyfoot preachers. They get rid of their pulpits. Like this big pulpit I'm standing behind here. Get little glass pulpits or or they uh uh or they just uh, put a, a a little microphone in front of them, they walk around, just walk around up in front. They, they ain't got no pulpit anymore. They preach behind them. It says, uh, and it says, uh, for then time will come when they shall not endure sound doctrine. Can't hit, they can't take heavy preaching. They don't want to go where they get the ears tickled, like most preachers preach today. It's like, you, you know what most churches are like joining today? It's like joining the Elks Club. Yeah, it's like joining a social organization. What kind of a social event will we have this week? Huh? Time will come. They will not endure sound doctrine. They won't be able to take Bible preaching. But you see, in the Old Testament, we read in, remember we read in Deuteronomy 18, when Moses said, God told him to go bring them preachers. Here in the New Testament, Paul, who was a great preacher, he was teaching his young preacher, Timothy, how to let her rip, amen? But after their own lusts, shall they, hip to, shall they heap to themselves teachers, having itching ears. You see, these people got itching ears. They don't want to hear the truth. They don't want to hear fables. Look at verse 4. These itching ear people that want a false teacher, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth. Let's repent like Jesus was a great preacher. Jesus preached, repent, least ye likewise perish. A lot of preachers, they don't preach on repentance. They don't preach on sin. God is good and you're good. You know, a lot of these modern day preachers, and a lot of, they claim to be evangelical preachers. They claim to be saying they preach the born again experience. They don't. Uh, they say, they preach this. There's good in you, and you just have to find out the good in you. There ain't no good in you. 
Who's good, God? That's why we need to repent, turn from our sins. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned on the fables. Because there's any good in you, that's a fable. There's a preacher here. Oh, it's been quite a while ago now, maybe a couple of years now. And there's a preacher one time argued with me and said his mother was good. I said, your mother was no good. No better than my mother. Because even our mothers who were dear and Bible-believing mothers, Vern, like your mother was, my mother, they weren't good. The only good in my mother and Vern's mother, anybody's mother, was God. And my, my, my mother had a lot of God in her. So the good that she had was God, huh? Huh? Wasn't hers, huh? Fables. Verse 5. But watch thou in all things. Endure afflictions. Paul said, you know, Paul was in jail most of the time. Why, why was Paul in jail? Was he a crook? Huh? He's just a preacher. Why'd he go to jail preaching? There's preachers today all over the world uh, that are put in jail. Some will be killed today. Today, this very day. But watch thou in all things endure afflictions. Do the work of an evangelist. What's the work of an evangelist? Get people saved, huh? Like Billy Graham, D.L. Moody, you know, other evangelists. That's what evangelists, but we're all supposed to be evangelists. I didn't elaborate on this. Everybody a preacher, men and women, Christian, everybody that saves a preacher. What's a preacher? A preacher is someone tells someone how to be saved. Now I'm a pastor. I oversee this church. But I'm a preacher that stands in the pulpit and lets it rip, amen? I watch very carefully. I had a guy come in here. It wasn't that long ago. It was in the last six months. Some of you might be able to figure out who it was. He's coming in here to church, and and, uh, and he gives tithe. He's a tither. And act like a Christian and everything. And, and, and uh, I didn't really know what he believed, really, that much. But he come in. I was remember when I was in my sickness and that, a couple months ago, and something come up where I, I, I just got real sick and I was in the emergency room and I was in the hospital. I couldn't be here on Sunday. And he sent me a text and he said he was supposed to preach that Sunday. God told him that he was supposed to preach. And I, I was wrong for not, I didn't. God never told me that. I'll tell you what. It's few and far between when you see anybody standing in this pulpit preaching, huh? Am I telling you the truth? Uh, do you remember who used to work with me and used to preach from behind this pulpit? Brother Lamb. A lot of people love Brother Lamb. Any of you remember Brother Lamb? I have people all the time ask me, how's Brother Lamb? Well, he's dead now. He was 90s. He was in his early 90s then. He's gone to heaven now. But I'll let Brother Lamb preach because he's like me. Not that I'm anything. But, and I say this carefully. But I'm like Timothy, who Paul trained. I'm like Paul. And I'm like Moses. And I'm like Isaiah and Jeremiah and Ezekiel and Daniel and Hosea and Joel and Amos and Obadiah. I'm a preacher! You should preach too. Be like Isaiah. Be like Paul. Tell them about Jesus. <coughs> Church. Internet. Everybody in church here this morning, they raise their hands, that one person. But now listen, out there in the audience, if you're saved in church or out there in the audience, when's the last time that you personally stood before people like I'm doing now or personally? Uh, you know the best kind of preaching is? One to one. One to one. Uh, you know, one, one, one to one, you know why it's best to share one to one? Because you can communicate, you can see, see, if I preach to 
10 people or 20 or 100. I preach to 1,000. I preach to 2,000. I preach to 3,000. I preach a big crowds. I've had big crowds in church. But you know, the best one to preach to that you can uh, you can identify with best and communicate with best is one-to-one. -one. Don't forget that. One-on-one. -on -one. Jesus Jesus gave us a good example of that a number of times in the Bible. But let's look especially. Do you remember the woman at the well? Do you remember what kind of woman, what kind of woman was she? Well, she had had five husbands and she's living with, she's shacking up now. But besides being that, she was a Samaritan. A Samaritan was a half-breed, uh, was mixed mixed race. And the Jews, it was Jews mixed with different, you know. And the Jews hated the Samaritans because they weren't pure Jews. Uh, most of the Jews, they were uh, supremacists. They looked down on others that weren't Jews. Don't you look down like, like Hitler did with the Germans. We just seen here, we looked at that thing about uh, 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 t uh, Corey Ten Boom, who was in the concentration camp. We seen that. I showed it to you here last week or whatever. But one-on-one, um, uh, -on -one, that's the best preaching. Tell someone about Jesus. You see, I give you a book. Let's see if I got one on here. Let's see one right here now. We uh, let's go soul winning. Jack Howell's book. I've got it. somebody. I've given it to already. If someone needs one, you see me. I I get you one. But uh, they'll turn their ears from the truth and shall be turned on the fables. Prosperity preaching. Baloney. Verse 5, but watch thou in all things. Endure afflictions. That's where we're going to be persecuted for Christ like Paul was. Remember we said Paul's in jail. All these letters he wrote, they're from jail. He wrote them from jail. Like uh, 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 John Bunyan wrote Pilgrim's Progress from jail. Second most read book in the world besides the Bible. Now watch, endure afflictions, do the work of an, of an evangelist, make full proof of thy ministry. You're going to be persecuted? Preach. Best way to preach, one-on-one. -on -one. Verse 6, Paul, for I'm now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. You know what that means? Paul was going to die. God told him he was going to die soon, okay? That's what that means right there. His departure is at hand. He's going to be gone. Now this is, I, w I want to be able to say this, verse 7. When I die, I want to be able to say this. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. That's what I want to say. I don't want to let it be said I was a backslider. I quit the ministry like a lot of these preachers. Retire and, and go away and do not do nothing. They, they quit preaching and they quit getting people saved and you never retire from God's God's work. You never require. Uh, you never retire from God. I fought a good fight. I finished my course. I've kept the faith. Isn't that a good verse? You ought to memorize it. And see, that's why I'm, everybody in church raised their hand except one person today. And every one of you, men and women, you see everybody out there in the audience, if you're saved, you ought to memorize this, and you ought to be able to. Want to you want this ought to be the desire of your heart, like mine is. I fought a good fight. You see, Christianity is a fight. Who we fight, the devil? How do we fight to put on the armor of the Lord? Ephesians six, huh? huh. Put on the whole armor of God that ye might withstand against the wiles of the devil. Ephesians 6. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, 
but against principalities, against powers, against workers of evil of, in high places. Therefore, put on the whole armor of God, and having done all, and having done all, we can prevail and we can stand. Stand, therefore. Listen now. now here's the armor. Having your loins girt about with truth. Amen. Truth. The word of God. Put on the breastplate of righteousness. Do right. Protect your heart. And your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Go soul winning. Huh? And above all, I said, and above all, and I said, above all, the shield of faith. How do you get faith? Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. That's why you get faith. Yeah, and I'm preaching right now. This is this is old time preaching. Just like Moses preached. Just like Isaiah preached. And Jeremiah and Ezekiel and Daniel. And Hosea and Joel, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah, Malachi. It's like they and a lot of others back there. And the New Testament, Paul. And Timothy. And Peter. Boy, didn't but didn't Peter preach a blockbuster sermon on the day of Pentecost, Acts chapter Acts chapter two? But he had full of the whole school. Yeah. I fought a good fight. I've finished my course. I've kept the faith. I've kept the faith. The faith of our blessing. Blessed Lord Jesus Christ. The true faith. And faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Amen. Through the night I listen to the Bible. I read it every chance I get. I just turn it on. I listen to it. I read it. I read it when it's on the paper. And I read it. And I, and, and I read it. I watch it on the screen up here. I'll let you watch sometime. I read it there. Put Al, I'll put, I'm going to put Alexander Scorby. He's the English reader for England. I'm going to put it up here for him reading it. After, after when we eat, I'm going to put it up there today. Alexander Scorby. I had him up there the other day. He's a good reader. You, know, watch, you can read it yourself. It's got the Bible up there. You read it and listen to him read it. it. It makes it better. Fought a good fight. I finished my course. I'm near the end. Like... Doris always says, the young may die, the old must die. I'm old. I'm living on borrowed time. I'm 83. I'm living on my, that's okay. I still preach, thank God. I fought a good fight. I've finished my course. I'm about to finish my course. I've kept the faith of my Lord Jesus Christ. Henceforth, that means, listen, here's what's going to happen because I'm going to finish to the end. I fought a good fight. I finished my course. I've kept henceforth, because of that, there's laid up for me a crown of righteousness. Well, glory. The only rewards that matter are not from this earth, but we do have rewards on this earth, but it's in heaven to come, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only. So it ain't only Paul that's going to do it. It ain't only Paul that can say, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. But it can be. He says, not me only, but unto all them. Now, all them, that could be me and you, couldn't it? Why don't you put your name in there, huh? Brother and sister in Christ, out in the viewing audience, you're here. Why don't you put your name in there, brother and sister? Not me only, but to all them also that love his appearing. Are you looking for Jesus? Amen. Coming again. The Greek word for it is Maranatha. Come Lord Jesus, Maranatha. Come Lord Jesus. I'm looking for his appearing. I'm looking for the rapture. I'm not looking for the undertaker. I'm looking for the, the upper taker. <laughs> I drove through the graveyard yesterday over here on Bellevue. Yeah. Uh, it's got little hills. 
uh, Lomans, they got that cemetery, and they got the one over there in Ormond Beach. Well, no, Ormond Beach is flat as a pancake. I, I like that one over there better, so. Me and my wife drove through there. Now, I hope I go in the, in the rapture. But if I die, I don't want my wife to have to go around and try to find a place to bury me, so. I'm going to bury a place. I'm going to buy a place. Uh, get a plot, you know. So if I die or she dies, we got a place here. We, we get them together there. Husband, we've been married. I've been married to one wife, same wife. I'm going to be buried next to her. Um, we'll get two of them. If she goes, I'll plan on looking for other, no other wife. I'm way too old for another wife. Huh? One 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 wife in a lifetime's not enough, right? Now I didn't I ain't saying that negatively. <laughs> These guys, their wife dies and they're eighty years old. They go around looking for some spring chicken. Something wrong with them? I know what's wrong with them, but I ain't gonna fall. For, I ain't gonna fall for that, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I ain't even gonna get into talking about that. Then you won't think I'm a preacher. I get talking about that kind of stuff. <laughs> Henceforth, there's laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous Judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them that also love His appearing. I'm looking forward to Jesus coming again, coming again. Maybe morning, maybe noon, maybe evening, but coming soon. Coming again, coming again. Oh, what a wonderful day that will be. Jesus is coming again. Marvelous message I preach. You know, that's a, uh, uh, that's a, um, a fairly newer song. It isn't a, usually I like the real old. That isn't real old, but it's a good song. Um, coming again. Jesus is coming again. Well, he's coming for me and he's coming for you if you're saved. The Bible says the dead in Christ, those that have been saved historically, Adam and Eve, Moses, David, all of them preachers, all of these, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Daniel, Hosea, Joel, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah, Mekai. You ought to memorize the books of the Bible. Those are the uh, the major prophets and the minor prophets. What's a major prophet? They wrote a longer book. A minor prophet, they had a shorter book. Didn't mean they were more important. The minor prophets don't mean they're any less uh, authoritative or good, but it's all God's word. Laid up a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me, Paul, at that day. Not me only, but also them that love his appearing. I love his appearing. Yeah. Verse 7. I fought a good fight. Can you say that? I'm doing the best I can. I'm still fighting. I'm glad I can have a little. I'm glad I can have a 50-some-year-old man, Willie Lewis, Write to me and say you preached like you did when I was nine years old, preacher. I'm glad for that. Amen. Amen. I fought a good fight. I finished my course. I've kept the faith. You know, I like to die in the pulpit. It might be a little shocking if I slumped over this pulpit and slid down to the floor and died. But it's the way I'd like to die preaching. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Well, God uses preaching. Who's a preacher? Every Christian. Every Christian. But you'll have people like me, and like Paul, and like Moses, and like Isaiah and Jeremiah. Uh-huh, yeah. And the rest of the Old Testament prophets that I've named a bunch of times this morning. Major prophets, minor prophets. 
Daniel, Hosea, Joel, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Rebecca, Zephaniah, Zechariah, Haggai, Zechariah, Malachi, all of them. And Peter, Paul, and James, and John, not Judas, he was a betrayer. He was a devil. We got some devil preachers today, too, you know, like Judas is one of the twelve. We got some around. Give me that old time religion. Give me that old time religion. Give me that old time religion. Good enough for me. It was good enough for Moses. <laughs> it was good enough for Paul. It was good enough for Timothy. It's good enough for me. I even had that rhyme. I'm getting to be a songwriter. <laughs> well, give me the old time religion. I got without the old time religion, without repenting and being saved, you ain't no chance for you. Ain't no chance for anybody. Old Testament or new, it's always been the same. Repent, at least you perish. We need a preacher. We need a pastor. We need a D.L. Moody. We need a Billy Sunday. Yeah, we need a preacher. We need a, a man of God so he can fire up people in his local church to go out and get others say, let's pray, Lord, thank you. Jeremiah. I'm sorry, Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy, chapter 18. So you're going to give them preachers. You got preachers and pre I'm glad I'm an old time preacher. Like Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Daniel, Hosea, Joel, Elmer, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum. Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah, Malachi. I'm glad I'm like old Testament preachers. I'm glad I'm like Paul, Peter, James, and John, all and on and on and on. Timothy, Paul, praise God. D.L. Moody, Jack Hiles, John Rice. Yeah. Yeah. All the old time preachers. Give us men of God to preach. Give us people of God that are in those congregations and listen to them preach. I listen to old time preachers. Charles Finney. I don't know. I've been saved. Jesus said, repent. I have. April 4th, 1969. Have you? If you haven't, God speak into your heart. Get saved right now. If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus... And believe in thine heart, God to raise him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. And the Bible says, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Why don't you pray the sinner's prayer right now if you're not saved? Here in the audience, well, just one person didn't raise your hand in our audience. Maybe that person. Someone out there in the viewing audience, pray the sinner's prayer with me. Dear Lord Jesus, I believe you died for me. And shed your precious blood. On Calvary's cross. Rose from the grave the third day. The best I know how with an honest heart. I turn from my sins. Receive you. As my savior. Thank you for saving me. Right now. Amen. amen. And amen.